what's up guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about how to make a note taking app in C Sharp. So what we're going to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio and we're going to create a new project here. It's going to be a Windows Forms app so go ahead and find that here and we're going to go ahead and name it. So we're going to call it note taking app. All right guys now we're loaded up and we have our interface here and first we're going to start off by adjusting a few settings. So first click on your form as a whole Go down to where it says text and instead of form one, we're going to go ahead and call it note taker. And instead of the name being form one, we're also going to call it note taker. Now we're going to go ahead and give it a nice back color besides this white color. So let's go ahead and choose something fun. I don't know. We're going to do like, uh, like kind of like a turquoise. This is fine. All right, guys, now that that's out of the way, we're going to go ahead and double click on the form and they'll open up our back end code here. So that will create is note taker load method and that'll be important for later use. All right, guys, so first we're going to go ahead and drag two text boxes onto the screen. So go ahead and find that. It should be in your toolbox somewhere near the bottom. Let's go ahead and drag a text box, make one of them just single line, and then just copy this and paste it again. And the second one here is going to be multi-line. So go ahead and find the property down the bottom right. Change multi-line to true. That way it lets us expand this good old thing. And we're going to make this take up a big majority of the screen. We're going to make it roughly take up like this amount of area, maybe a little bit smaller. That way we have room for like uh, some headings and stuff. So go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do the same thing up here. So take this first text box and expand it over here. And this is going to be the title of the note. So uh, we need some labels for that so the user knows what we're actually talking about. So go ahead and drag two labels onto the screen. We're just going to start with this first one here, kind of put it above the first text box. And obviously, instead of saying label one, we're just going to say title with a colon. That way they know that they need to put a title here. We're also going to change auto size from the true to false. That way it lets us uh, edit this. So we're going to go ahead and expand it to the width of the text box and we're going to change how the text actually looks so go up and let's uh, just make sure to center it so instead of the text align being the top left we're going to make it the middle left and we're going to go ahead and make it bold as well so go ahead and find where your text settings are click in here and just make sure to change it to bold and maybe bump up the font a little bit so now you see it's a little bit larger and easier to read and we're just going to take this copy it paste it here and then we're going to put it right below that and instead of saying title for the second one we're going to change the text to say note with a colon again now we load into the application we actually see that we have a title and note area and now we need some sort of area to view the past notes that they've already um, created all right guys so for this actual table of previous notes we're going to go ahead and find where it says data grid view and drag it onto the screen now ignore this initial pop-up that shows up we're just going to uh, leave it blank for now but take this and we're going to put it up here in the top left corner and we're going to expand it down like this and then just leave a little bit of room at the bottom here because we're going to put our other buttons down there so go ahead and drag a button onto the screen and we're going to make it roughly like a quarter of the size of this area down here instead of button one we're going to um, call it save so we're going to say actually you know what we're going to say load so we're going to this is for loading a note so call it um load button and then for the actual text we're going to say load and we're going to change some other properties for the button we're going to change the background from the cyan color and we're going to make it white and then we're going to obviously make the font a little bit easier to read so bump it up to bold and you know size 10 that way it's just nice and easy to read and we're going to just copy this and paste it again put it right next to this other button here and you can expand them a little bit that way they kind of meet in the middle and instead of uh, load for the second button we just created we're going to call it delete and we're going to change the actual name of it to delete button so delete button copy this and paste it once again place this right down here and you'll notice we have we're kind of running out of room so make this smaller button or this bottom button a little bit smaller and this top button a little bit smaller as well and then we can kind of just try to meet them in the middle as best we can all right guys what i ended up doing is just giving this a little bit more room so i, I brought this up a little bit and made these a little bit taller that way they, they roughly look the same size maybe they're not perfect but they're at least close go ahead and do that and then we're going to need one more button um first let's change the properties for this one so this one is going to be for saving notes. So we're going to say um, save button and we're going to change the text on it to save. And then we need one more note here. Then we need this last one here to say new. So this is going to be for creating new notes. So we're going to say new note and then we're going to make the actual name of it new note button. And then go up to your data grid view and instead of data grid view one, we're going to say previous notes and then instead of this uh, background color of this gray or whatever we're going to change this to be white as well so just go ahead and do that that way we have kind of matching colors across the board all right guys now i think that we're ready to really start creating um, the functionality for this app so first we're going to take each one of our buttons and double click it that way it automatically creates a click method in the back end code so double click here 
double click here double click here and one last time right here. All right, guys, now that we are in the back end of our code, now we can start creating some cool stuff. So the very first thing we need to do is at the top and it needs to be up here because it's a globally accessible variable. We need to create something called a data table. So we're going to say data table notes equals new data table. And what this is really for is a data table is going to act as the back end for our data grid view. The data grid view operates on having some sort of data set to display. And we're going to create that by using this data table. The other thing that we're going to need is a Boolean called editing. So we're going to say bool editing equals false. And this is going to be in charge of just keeping track of whether we're actually editing the note or not. And you'll see this later. All right, guys, now we're ready to actually edit our note ticker load method. So, so the first thing we need in this load method is we're going to um, take our data table we just created. So we're going to say notes.columns.add. And then we're going to call it title. So this is going to be the title of the note. Um, obviously, we need to store that in the data table somehow. We're going to need it one more time. And instead of title, we're going to say note. That way we have a title and note for each entry in the data table. And yeah, that's just how we're going to do it. And then the other thing that we need is we need to set the data grid view, which is our uh, little box here. We need to set that data source equal to the data table we created in the back end. So we need to say previous notes, which is what we called it, dot data source. So data source is equal to notes. That way it points to that and it knows what you know, we're editing this stuff in the back end and it knows that it needs to point to that data source so it can um, update our display. All right, guys, one thing I just realized is we actually need to um, name these note or these two fields in the front end. So go here to the title first and we're going to um, name it. That way we can reference it in the back end code. So instead of text box one, we're going to call it title box. And then instead of this uh, text box two here, we're going to call it note box. So now we can go to the back end again, and then we can start editing that stuff. So this very first one, we're just going to say title box dot text is equal to nothing. And the same thing here. So note box dot text is equal to nothing. That's because whenever we click this new note button, um, we know that whatever is currently there, we actually don't care about it. So we just want to clear it out and start from scratch. All right, guys, the next thing we're going to do is make this delete button work. All right, guys, the first thing we're going to put in here is this try catch block. And the reason we need that is because there is no guarantee that the user is currently clicking on a actual note in the data grid view. We just need to handle that certain case. So obviously the goal is that there will be notes there and they will be able to like click on it. And then, we, you know, we want to delete that current note. But in case for whatever reason, there is not a valid one um, there. We don't want to delete something that's null. So we just need to add this that way in case there's a null pointer, you know, the thing doesn't crash. And something that is useful is we're just going to say console.writeline. And instead of um, outputting the error message, we're just going to say not a valid note because we know that the user probably clicked on something that's not valid. And inside of our try block, we need to actually access notes, which is our data table. We're going to say notes.rows because we're going to access the rows in the data table. And then we need to do something special. So open up these brackets here. And in here, we're going to say previous notes, which is our data grid view and our dot current cell. And this current cell property is the current cell that the user has selected. And like I said, it might not always be um, full of something. And we're going to say dot row index. And that way that it actually references a index in the data grid view. Then we just need to add this little dot delete part at the end here. That way it deletes it from the notes data table object based on whatever index the user has clicked on. Hopefully it makes sense and comment down below if it doesn't. All right, guys, that's all we need for the logic for our delete button. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and click on the load button. All right, guys, and the way that this program is going to be set up is not only am I going to have functionality for double clicking on a certain entry and that will bring it up the note, but also I think that if they just single click and then click load, um, it'll do the exact same thing. So this load button will be in charge of simply bringing up the notes that we already have stored. And the way to do that is we're just going to say that we need to fill up our you know two text boxes with the information from the note. So we're going to say title box dot text is equal to the notes dot rows. And then a very similar thing that we did down below or sorry, up above with the delete button. And we're going to access the previous notes dot current cell dot row index. And then here's an important part. We're going to say dot item array at zero. And what that's doing is we open up this row and then there's two things. There's going to be a title and a note. And we just want to set the title. So we need the very first index of that item array inside of that row. And then we could just do that. And then a very similar thing here. We just need to copy this line. Go ahead and make a new one. And instead of title box dot text, we're going to say notes box or notebox 
And then we're going to obviously change this item array zero to one. And then one more thing is we need to say dot to string because it needs to be converted to a string. So go ahead and add that in there as well. And one more thing that we need to do is we need to set our Boolean editing variable up to uh, true because obviously if they load the note, they intend to probably edit it. So we just need to set it to true. All right, guys, we're ready to tackle our save button click method. So first we're going to say if editing. Now, if editing is true, we know that they have just changed the uh, note somehow and now they click the save button which means they want to save their current changes um, to overwrite the, the old one so what we need to say in here is super similar to up above so just go ahead and take this and copy it we're going to say that and then we're going to index into here and so instead of item array at zero we're going to say um, title because we're indexing that and that's going to be equal to whatever the ins inside of the title box dot text you know super similar thing here is the same thing except instead of title we're going to say note and instead of title box we're going to say notebox so go ahead and overwrite that and that's all we need for our if statement and then we're going to have an else here and you know if editing is not true then we just want to save whatever is um, in the current note field so we're going to say notes.rows.add because we're adding a very new entry and the first item of the array is going to be titlebox.text and then the second item of the array is going to be notesbox.text that way we've saved both entries and we put it into the item array of zero and one as you saw earlier then obviously because they clicked the save button uh, we just want to wipe out the note that we just had so we're going to clear out the text and you can just copy this stuff here and then we're also going to set editing equal to false because we we obviously, we were done editing. All right, guys, we're super close to being done. One more thing we want to do is we want to add some cool um, functionality for double clicking. So go ahead and click on your data grid view, go to the lightning symbol so we can add some properties. And we're going to go ahead and find cell double click. And this is just saying that if they click on or if they double click on a cell, then we want to load the note just like the load note button. So go ahead and just double click in here. Now automatically add this method to the back end code. And then this is going to be the identical code as what the load button had. So go ahead and take this and put it in here. And that's literally all we need. So now we could go ahead and run our program and see if it works. All right, guys, here we are. We have our program loaded. And one thing off the bat, you'll notice that this title and note thing is kind of off into the top left corner. So let's go ahead and fix that. All right, guys, and the way to fix that is we're going to go ahead and click on our data grid view. We're going to scroll down to the layout section and find this auto size columns mode. And instead of none, we're going to go ahead and change it to fill. That way that it automatically sizes the columns to fill up the width of the data grid view. So now that we have that set, we should be able to launch it and notice that it takes up the entire area. And as you see, it does. So now we can test out our functionality. So let's go ahead and push some gibberish in here and some gibberish. And if we go ahead and click save, you'll notice it adds a brand new entry to the table, which is awesome. And now let's go ahead and add another one. So let's do this and that save it again so now we have two notes now let's test that if we double click on one it should load it so double click and you'll notice that's awesome and what if we want to edit it let's just go ahead and you know change the note a little bit save and you'll notice it did change it which is sick one more thing we can test is let's go ahead and click on this and load and you notice it does the exact same thing as before and let's go ahead and try the delete button as well it deletes the entry which is sick and let's test the, the new button and if we click new it kind of wipes things out and we just put some stuff in here click save and that's awesome so let's click new la 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 and it adds a brand new entry which is dope so guys that's all we have for this tutorial hope you learned something and had fun while doing it um, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Comment down below any thoughts or suggestions or problems, and I'd be happy to help you out. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this, and thank you guys for watching once again, and I'll see you in the next one.